Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Dade County Weekly Update. My name is Carrie Anderson with Dade County. I do public information here. Remember, you can type your questions in the comment section during the live update. And if you don't want to ask your questions during the live broadcast, you can always email us at info at dadecounty-ga.gov. Thank you so much for coming to the right place for the right information. Today we'll be hearing from Alex Case, uh, Dade County EMA Director, and Ted Rumley, the Dade County Executive. If you know someone who would be interested in hearing from any of our guests today, go ahead and invite them to watch this live broadcast or start a watch party so you can hold your own discussion. Remember that you can also watch this later on Facebook or YouTube and sharing the links to our videos is super easy. Um, I do want to give an apology today for the lack of our live Facebook video of our KWIN interview today with Alex Case and um, Evan Stone from KWIN. We did have a little bit of an issue with Facebook this morning. It actually turned out to be a good thing. Uh, um, it was a bit of a problem caused from technical difficulties, but it was due to a good thing, and that's that the Facebook activity is up on Dade County Georgia and we now have more users than we had before and our followers than we had before and lots more comments and um, people interacting and so we're nearly at 6,000 followers on Dade County Georgia on the Facebook page and so Facebook decided that we needed to have a multi-factor authentication system and so we put that in place and so now we are live with you again thank you for being patient with us this morning um, we are glad to be back with you today here um, at three o'clock so but this also does bring up that we are looking at other ways to be able to live stream to get out communications to Dade County so we do have a Twitter page that you can follow or a Twitter account that you can follow and we also have a YouTube channel at Dade County Georgia so we started that around February of this year and we already have about 140 subscribers so we are looking at trying to do more on YouTube as well for those of you who would prefer to watch us on YouTube that will become an option so um, at this time we'll hear from Alex Case who will discuss with us the virtual spotter class and the storm shelters Thank you, Carrie, and good afternoon, everyone. Again, I'm Alex Case, Director of Dade County Emergency Services, which is your 911 Center, uh, Emergency Management, and our EMS Division of Dade County for Emergency Services. And again, it's uh, great that we've got so many followers. We were a little worried this morning, but again, like Carrie said, the good news, we've got nearly 6,000 folks that enjoys in our county to listen to us and what's happening on our weekly updates and keeping you informed. Um, we reported a few weeks ago we had a uh, virtual storm spotter class that is offered through the National Weather Service. Every few years, Dade and Walker County team up to have this, and usually we have it one year in Dade County, and then the next next time we have in Walker. And this is part of the emergency management of each county is becoming storm uh, storm ready from the National Weather Service. And there's a lot of things that go into that, and we worked up to it and got it several years ago. And so this is part of our due diligence to get the public involved with uh, virtual with uh, storm spotters. Uh, we we had we had five of us, I believe there was five, four or five of us in the EOC as part of our retraining with National Weather Service that done it as well. Uh, there was a lot of people had comments. Uh, haven't got the final tally of how many people were there, but a lot of comments and questions to the presenter. And I felt it was a really good thing, and I hope they continue to do it in, in today's time with busyness and the technology with handheld uh, devices and 
laptops and being at home computer, it probably made it a lot easier for someone to attend instead of having to drive to Walker Civic Center or come here to the Dade County Administration Building for our meeting. Let's do it virtual, which was really good and it was really interactive. Uh, it was two hours and I believe we done nearly three, uh, just a lot of information he was giving and so it was really good. And those storm spotters are very important as you can give information to the weather service. As storms are approaching from Birmingham or Huntsville or as they pass through our county and that information is relayed up, it helps the meteorologist at the National Weather Service, uh, 3, 9, and 12 out of Chattanooga, they watch these spotter informations as well to help determine how they give their warnings, watches and or warnings out. So it's a very great tool and I, I thank you for the ones that attended. Uh, we will, as soon as it comes back again or we see some more interest or if you have more interest, we will be glad to see if they can do another virtual and we'd be glad to help host that again and put it out there. Another one of those things for being a storm ready is that we do have our hyper reach system, which is on our dadecounty-ga.gov website. Um, it's a opportunity where you can opt in to a system and be notified by cell, text, uh, landline, or email for severe thunderstorm warnings and or tornado warnings and or flood warnings if you live in the area along Lookout Creek where prone to flood. Um, this is an opt-in system. We've probably got around three to 4,000 in that range. It usually, I think the last count we looked, it was around 34, 3,600. So again, that's based on you logging in, receiving those messages as soon as the National Weather Service hits that. It's also used in a case that we need to get a message out in the area. So if we, for an example, if you lived in the north end of the county and we draw a map in the area of the county where, and we've used it for a lost child or a lost uh, elderly subject that has, or person that has Alzheimer's, and we need people to start looking, we can draw a mile radius from where we at, or we can, we use it in 2016 when we had the forest fires out in the Head River area, we drew uh, in front of that fire, way out in front, notifying people, and giving them updates constantly, tell them what's going on. So it's a very uh, great tool to have. Again, please take your time, check with your family, your friends, your neighbors, sign up for that. Or if you'd like to give our office a call at 706-657-4111, that's the non-emergency line for Dade County 911. We'll be glad to help you, but it's, go to the website, sign up, it's for free. It's a subscription base that we pay every year, part of some federal funding that we get to operate emergency management in Dade County. Another thing that helps us be storm ready is our outdoor warning sirens. We have three of these that's been put in through hazard mitigation grants from our uh, hazard mitigation planning that we do every five years. Uh, the first one was put in here, right beside our administration building, which covers a good bit of the city and the city park. Uh, the next two were put in at the Larry Moore Sports Complex or the Dade County Four Fields, it's still commonly called, and Davis School Road, which is at the top of the hill close to where the uh, Trailblazers uh, horse and uh, Cat, uh, the horse shows that goes on out there above where the old football field is behind the Davis School. Now these are outdoor warnings if you're outdoor doing activities. It's not designed to be waking you up in the middle of the night or letting you know that's what the hyper reach is and or a NOAA approved weather radio. With all the outdoor events of our parks, uh, Jenkins Park, sports complex in the park and the walking track, the outdoor activities of the Lyman Center, that's right there within two of those, and those have a good mile plus reach. It makes an audible sound, it will actually tell you what it is, it'll make an audible sound and tell you the message. A couple questions I think come up in the past when we talk about this, is these systems tested? They test every day with us and let us know what's going on. It's a silent test, but actually audible tests we have not scheduled. And when we do, we will do that. We would like to start maybe doing that on a quarterly basis just to let the public know when it is and hear what it sounds like in non-storm seasons. Uh, we can also, we have several pre uh, 
subscribe messages that it can be in there, but we can actually talk on it ourselves for so many seconds. It's actually driven on batteries. Uh, the power to them is keeps them charged, and it's also triggered through uh, automatically through the National Weather Service with tornado warnings only. If a tornado warning is hit in the polygon section of an area of the county, all three of those uh, uh, sirens will alert based on the polygon sections they're in. Then the last thing that we've done, there have been two great strides in this, is our shelters. The very first thing is our hub network, the hub network of our churches and our volunteers that's been opening up in our last two storms uh, that we've had this year. Uh, the churches have opened up, we put those out. Again, it determines what volunteers are available at each church, locations on the, in the county that we open up. Uh, when the volunteers are available, they said, yes, we can open a shelter. We published that out. Uh, those leaders, uh, Pastor Mike King and Pastor Reese Frossett, are the two that we give that to, and then they follow through with their close to 27 plus uh, agencies now throughout our community. If you're very interested, please get with us or send us some, uh, we, get, we can give you the contact numbers for those as well for the hub. And then our other things we are also working on really heavily is our storm shelters that we also purchase off a of mitigation grant. We're, uh, Dade County was awarded nearly $1.3 million to build three uh, precast rectangle type buildings that will hold 265 folks in them. And uh, they're gonna be at the uh, Larry Moore Sports Complex between the Senior Center and the corner of the soccer fields. Uh, South Dade Community Center, uh, be right there kind of in front of the fire hall and adjacent to the uh, South Dade, the old South Dade School and Community Center. And then the third one will be uh, on Davis School Road. We're still working with our uh, school board on the final locations for that. We've run into a few little issues but we're really working diligently to get that done. One of the buildings is nearly complete. They're looking for the middle of next month to the end of next month to have it delivered. Uh, the first, first one will be going in at, it'll be at the Larry Moore Sports Complex. Uh, we're getting a finalized bidding on the footing work. This footing work is very detailed. It's very big. It's got a lot of steel. It's got, um, it's larger because these things sit on it, but it's also got to keep it in the ground. So the lift factor, these buildings will take up to a 250 mile per hour wind and hold up to 265 folks. And it's going to be for multiple uses. If we need a community meeting, a point of distribution for vaccines or information or food or um, cooling shelter or warming shelter and a shelter for storms. And these things will be readily available with uh, electronic locks that will be unlocked by us remotely or it'll be a push button code that we will give out to the public. Once the storm is cleared, we will reset them, but we wanna make it very easy for folks to get in. Uh, these things will be monitored. Uh, we'll make sure that everything's taken care of, that everybody's safe in them. And hopefully that when we get them up and get them ready, we can do some community open houses and let the community come by and see it and see what's been invested and again, this grant is paying for 85% of this, and 15% of this is matched with your county splosh funds uh, for emergency services. So it's a great thing for us. Our goal is to have this done by August or September. We've already had to get, but this has been almost a six year project since we applied for these, um, uh, this grant based on a disaster that we had. So I know it's taken a long time and we're fighting through uh, federal uh, funding and verifications and uh, where these buildings were actually set, but we're so pleased that they're getting closer to us. Again, if you have any other questions for about 911, emergency management or the EMS side, please you can get with us from our website or give us a call at any time. Uh, my, our number is, my number is 423-718-2111, or you can call our office and speak to any of our 911 dispatchers, our supervisors, you can ask for a supervisor. We got several good folks. That number is 706-657-4111. Thank you and have a good afternoon.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good report, Alex. That, you covered a lot there in a short amount of time. Uh, very informative. Um, I'll start by going over a few things before we go into our COVID report. But uh, County Road 6, we're moving right along. They're, uh, they probably have gotten finished now uh, by this time of day of uh, driving the last guardrail, getting the guardrail in up there. Um, we will be, um, I don't know what I mentioned this before, but we are going to pave that whole road, you know, from 136. Uh, all the way up to the top of the mountain there and uh, it will be out of uh, the non-skid pavement which is a pavement we use in uh, areas like that that possibly might have ice or, or sleet or snow we've got some of it on burk altar and there's some of it up there too but that whole road right there will be uh, will be resurfaced and also be relined and of course like i mentioned the guardrails uh, have got to go up there which they'll have like i said they should have those finished uh, uh, probably by tomorrow or by monday morning anyway but uh this time next week, I hope we'll be getting real, real close to. Uh, we probably won't be open because we gotta. We're working with a striping crew. We're gonna get some striping down on it before we actually do open it up. But uh, we are so close now to getting uh, getting it open, so it's a good thing. And um, we'll be moving from there. We've got a little issue there up on um, uh, coming across the ridge there at Sligo from Highway 11. Uh, we've had some uh, sliding up there. Nothing like up here, but we've got probably 150, 200 feet of. Uh, a wall that we're going to have to uh, put up there. We'll keep you updated on that in the near future because we've got to uh, got to fix that. It won't won't be as near as in depth as this up here, uh, but we'll, nevertheless uh, we'll have to shut that road down for a short time, uh, coming across the ridge there, and we will keep you up on uh, updated on that when that is going to happen. Uh, the um, uh, mowing we've got our mowers out right now. Uh, just keep an eye out for them. Uh, I think they're up in the north end right now. I believe what Billy was telling me. And uh, so, you know, just be uh, be leery of that because it is, we've got a you know, truck behind them with flashing lights, but still, though, some of our county roads, you can come around a curve and be on before you know it, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, the Dade County Public Health, uh, we're still open there for uh, vaccination. Uh, the um, uh, hours, are, you know, we're posted here on our website, but now, uh, Carrie, from what I understand, you don't have to have an appointment, is that right? It's just a drive just drive up, go in, and you might have to wait just a little bit, but they'll, uh, you know, things just kind of slack down a little bit, uh, and that's a good thing. Um, the, uh, the primary, uh, they're still uh, doing, um, uh, taking appointments, you know, down at the four fields. They come down there. Not sure how long they're going to be doing that, but uh, a lot of people are like that because you don't have to get out of the car. You just pull up, get your vaccination, wait about 15 minutes, and then you're gone. So, um, but the, all that information also is on the um, uh, website. Uh, the, uh, the, Calling aid over there, we've teamed with the, with the people in Catoosa County, as I've mentioned several times. And uh, now, have they changed? I'm not I'm reading this. Uh, it's it's mainly a drop by. Now, I mean, you yes. you drive through. I mean, for drive, drive through there, and you, you know, it might take just a little bit of time, but not much. And uh, but I mean, as far as appointments go, this is what I'm asking. No, I mean, no appointments. Okay. And they're open. So that's that's four. a good sign. That, that, yeah. That's a sign that people you know, it's kind and, of leveling out. Yeah. Yeah, and they're open from four to eight today. Four to eight today. Okay. All right. So if you're in that area over there shopping or whatever, coming in from work, you know, just uh, just go by there. And you, a lot of people, you know, really don't. If they want it uh, right now, they can get it. They really, it really is not a lot of excuse, you know, to not get the vaccine because it's um, there's plenty out there and. And uh, like I said, you don't have to make appointments. Just, uh, just, just go do it. So. And we still have them available downstairs. Oh yeah, too. plenty here. Yeah. And most of it, I think most, that most of that we're, we're administering more of Moderna than anything, right? Downstairs, isn't that right here? Yes. I think the Moderna. It is all Moderna other. downstairs. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, Alliance for Dade, uh, uh, they be, they're issuing an invitation to a network of lunch and learn events at the Trent Civic Center, which is down at the park here in, in City Park. Um, Thursday, May the 6th, uh, from 11.30 to 1, uh, they're going to have the guest speakers, uh, Senator Mullis and also State Representative Mike Cameron. And um, you uh, are they asking to you to register at the you Alliance for Dade? You do have to register at the AllianceForDade.com. Okay. We're sharing that link right now um, mm -hmm. in our Facebook page, but uh, you do have to register. Well, they that. are. They're, they're calling lunch. it a lunch, and so is, that, is there a cost to that? I mean, there is. It's $15 yeah. for non members and Twelve dollars for members, I I think. Have you got it on? Is. Have you got it? I like, do. It's on okay. here now. Fifteen so. for non-members and twelve for members, but mm -hmm. there is a cost to that. But you'll have a good because uh, there's lunch. You'll have a good lunch, you know, and and uh, you'll have a chance to ask uh, our state representative and our senator. Uh, we'll listen to them first, but you'll have have a chance to ask them questions, you know, anything, any concerns that you might have. 
Um, there's some ribbon cutting, uh, cuttings uh, coming up. Um, we're going to have a um, Guthrie's re-grand opening uh, next Wednesday, and uh, that is uh, due to them actually renovated the inside and uh, done some remodeling. And uh, and plus, you know, it's kind of a, a thing, you know, coming out of this COVID and all this stuff, it's just kind of something good to do. And so it'll be a big day. I'm sure they'll, be, they'll have some uh, different uh, little things going on, uh, you know, promotional things going on, and that's, that's listed uh, online. Um, we have... Uh, Rodney Ross has informed us uh, with, with New Salem Fire Department, he's the chief out there, that this year's July the 4th will not happen as far as the fireworks. They're not sure on the barbecue because they've done that for many, many years too. And uh, he'll keep everybody up informed on that because it's always a good day and a big day. Uh, in fact, July the 4th, that event out there is the largest event we have in Dade County. It has been for several years. It draws more people than, uh, than you can imagine. If you've never been to it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, the um, Let's see now, we've got the blessing box out on the mountain that was installed just a few weeks ago. Uh, there right at the top of the mountain. It's a little food pantry you can go and you bring a food or if you need food, you can get it there. Uh, they're gonna have a, uh, they're gonna actually dedicate that uh, to uh, Alan Bradford. I'm gonna have a uh, dedication. And uh, that that will be. Let's see. What is the date on that? Is that May the eighth? It is. It's going to be May the eighth. Yep. May the eighth on Saturday. Saturday on May Saturday. And from what I understand, it's going to be at ten o'clock. There's not mm -hmm. a time here, but I think that's right. It's ten o'clock. It is at ten o'clock. Yep. And that'll be a special special day, you know. And and I know Alan would uh, would appreciate that. Uh, our Fred's building. Uh, we don't have an opening date yet, but they're down there again working. Uh, if you've noticed, you've been by there. They're installing coolers and a lot of equipment. Uh, that's going in there, uh, and so we're looking forward to that. That'll be a big deal, big date, uh, big big day anyway. And uh, uh, we'll we'll let you know about that, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, they'll have some possibly some free giveaways or whatever, you know, because it's going to be a going to be a big event. Uh, the uh, grant program uh, it's still available here uh, for people that's been affected by the COVID uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, you need to see Paula Stallings at 657-4625, and uh, there's still jobs there, but the, the big catch there is that you've you got to qualify. And, uh, you know, she's had several that have, but we've had a lot more that haven't qualified than have. So, But uh, just call uh, Paula there, call her office, and we can get you in touch with her. Uh, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month and Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. And uh, if you know someone who needs help dealing with these issues, Please contact Dade First Director Martha Baker at 423-509-1260. That number is also listed on our, our website. Uh, Saturday morning, we'll be having the uh, Tire Amnesty Day. Uh, that's uh, you know, going to be a big day. We've got a lot of people that's uh, showing interest in that. And uh, we'll take up to 20 tires. Uh, we're asking not to bring any uh, large tractor tires or large, you know, uh, dump truck or truck tires. Um, we, uh, we, it's only you know, for Dade County residents only. Uh, we're asking that, uh, you know, the tires be as clean as possible, you know, no mud, no water. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that's, sometimes that's hard to do, but, and, and no rocks, you know, we have seen them, you know, full of rocks and mud, but try to, try to, you know, get that out before you bring them. Uh, if it were to rain us out, which I don't think it's, it looks like it's going to be pretty good, uh, the makeup day is going to be May the 8th. And we'll, so we'll uh, we'll look uh, look forward to seeing you down there. And if you got any old tires laying around your house, now's the time to get rid of them. And it won't cost you anything, but it's time to bring them down there. And uh, like I said, we uh, we ask uh, we can take up to 20 tires per resident per household. So uh, and that will start uh, it will start at nine, and we'll we'll have a cut off at three o'clock. And uh, we we'll have to cut it off, you know, at three o'clock. Uh, you know, and if, we, if there's people in line, we'll still let them come on, but we'll have to shut the gate down there at that time. And um, the uh, and I think the maximum limit. I've not really looked at that. I think it was it is it 200 and 200 tires, I think, or something. Or, yeah, it, it's not very many. I don't know yeah, what the max is. It's probably more than that. I haven't really. But we got we got two trailers down there. We so we're going to fill both those trailers up. You know, stacking the tires in there. So anyway, uh, we'll we we'll look forward to seeing uh, seeing you down there. And I think most of the commissioners will be there working. We've got uh, Ray has agreed, and the chamber is over there as usual to, uh, you know, put the trustees uh, helping us, you know. And so we'll try to move, try to make the line move quickly, you know, as quickly as possible. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes Saturday. Moving to the uh, COVID report, uh, Dade County at this at this time, we have 1,205 positive cases that's been reported since uh, March of last year. 
uh, we're up from 197 of last week at this time. And we've had 17 in the last 14 days that have tested positive uh, for Dade County. Had, and then we've had, uh, let me make sure here I've got this right. We've got 13 deaths now, and uh, we've had 62 hospitalizations. Um, Walker County, uh, they're at 6,461. That's from last year, up from last year. And uh, last week we're at 6,399. Now they've had 123 reported positive in the last two weeks. Of course, they're a lot larger than us, but that's, that's quite a few people. Catoosa County, they went from 5,569 to 5,636. Uh, now they're up 145 people that have tested positive in the last two weeks. That's in Catoosa County. Chattooga County, um, they're at 2,225 as we speak today. Uh, they were at 2,214 a week ago, and they've had 23 tests positive in the last two weeks. That's quite a number there in Catoosa County, even though it is a larger county, you know, but at the stage that we're in right now as far as, uh, you know, vac the vaccine being given and all, it's, uh, uh, and, and it's not as convenient to get tested now, too. I mean, you know, they're not, there's not anywhere over there either that's actually doing the, uh, I mean, our, our, all of our regional health departments have, have actually cut that out as far as testing. That's so correct. if they're getting tested, they're going to a doctor's office or going to a clinic, you know. So that's that's a pretty big number still, you know. And a lot of people shop over there. There's a lot of people go to Fort Overthorpe and go to Cudish County and, and uh, to Lowe's and, and, and to the uh, Home Depot. And So you need to think about that, you know, when you're out. You know, try to wear those masks and, 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 uh, and use common sense. Uh, moving down to Tennessee, Hamilton County, uh, as we speak today, they're at 43,826 positive cases that's been reported since last year. Um, at this time, they have 561 active cases, uh, but they've had 42,774 people that actually have had COVID and have recovered. Uh, they've had 491 deaths. Marion County, uh, today they're at 3,116. Uh, they have 26 active uh, cases in the county there. They've had 3,043 people that have recovered out of that 3,116, had 47 deaths. Move down to Alabama, Jackson County. Jackson County, uh, they have 6,790 positive cases now. Uh, that's from the beginning of last year or from March of last year. They've had 110 deaths and they've had 30 cases reported in Jackson County in the last 14 days positive. Um, DeKalb County, they're up to 8,795. Um, they've had 184 people die there in, in DeKalb County. They've had, they have had 25 reported, positive reported cases in the last 14 days. And like I said, they're at 8,795 in DeKalb County. So, um, you know, it's, it's by far not over, you know, I mean, it's, it's looking a lot better. Uh, but we're still getting a lot of a lot of positive cases here on some of our uh, North Georgia counties here. Uh, so just try to be careful. Wear your mask. Keep your distance. Uh, Carrie, we got any questions? No questions. Okay. But one reminder is that we do have um, commission meeting next Thursday night. Oh yeah, next and Thursday is the first. Uh, yeah, April's gone. <laughs> it is gone. Yeah. And so yeah. Governor Kemp has done away with the social right. distancing mm -hmm. and stuff. So we'll be back to our normal. We're going to try to get back to normal, uh, you know, normal as we can and. And, uh, you know, so we'll have the seating like we always did. Everything will be uh, kind of back like it was. And, and hopefully that, uh, that, that'll work out and we can keep that way for a, for a long time. Uh, so just, uh, uh, you know, if you need anything at all, any information, you can call uh, my cell number, 423-667-8999. Call any of the commissioners. They're, they're available. Uh, they do answer their phones. If they don't, they'll call you back. And, of course, Alex gave you his number. He's the MA director. If you have any questions pertaining to anything that uh, pertain to EMA or, or emergency services, be sure to call Alex. And also, as uh, you know, he feel, feels the boots of the mayor too. So that that work that number works both ways. So we appreciate everyone out there. Appreciate everyone working with us. Uh, and um, one other thing I was going to say too. I mean, I'm just something I had. Uh, there's a, a fellow that's going to have. If you do have any of your tires that are on rims, on, on metal rims. Uh, from what I understand, there's going to be a fellow that's set up uh, over in the opposite lot over there where the uh, uniform place is at. Uh, and uh, he'll have a tire changer over there. He'll be breaking some of the tires down off the rims. 
And the only thing he asked, you know, he'd like to keep the, the rims. Uh, you know, he's doing it for, he's a volunteer anyway, doing it for, for nothing, and he'd like to keep them for just a scrap of the rims. So uh, if you do happen to have uh, any car, car tires or small tires or anything on rims, there will be a, an area over there. It's not on the county property. It's on uh, Mr. Forster, Jeff Forster's uh, uh, property over there where he, uh, he uh, does the, the uniforms. But uh, so that'll help some people out. Because some people have, you know, uh, a few tires, and they may have several of them that's on rims, so that's going to really help out. So uh, if any questions, just call my cell number, 667-8999, and we do appreciate you.